Hello and welcome to a Puzzled Panda video. Here are 100 facts you need to know about Pinocchio. In our previous video, we discussed the first animated feature produced by Disney, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was because of the massive success of Snow White, the production began for its next film. Pinocchio is a 1940 animated musical film produced by Walt Disney Production. It is based on the Italian children's novel The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. When Walt Disney picked up his Oscar statue for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, he talked to the audience for 25 minutes about the new feature they were making. The plot of the film involves a wooden carver named Geppetto, who carves a wooden puppet named Pinocchio. The puppet is brought to life by a blue fairy, who informs him that he can become a real boy if he proves himself to be brave, truthful and unselfish. In September 1937, during the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, animator Norman Ferguson brought in a translated version of Carlo Collodi's 1883 Italian novel, the Adventures of Pinocchio, and gave it to Walt Disney. After reading the book, Walt was jumping with joy and was very interested in creating a movie based on the story. Walt Disney wanted to make Bambi after the success of Snow White, but it was still too difficult to realistically animate the animals, so Pinocchio became the next story to adapt. Unlike Snow White, which was a short story that the writers could expand and experiment with, Pinocchio was based on a novel with a very thick story. Therefore, the story went through drastic changes before reaching its end product. In the original novel, Pinocchio is cold, rude and ungrateful. He only learns his lessons by means of brutal torture. The original story is episodic. It was published weekly. This is why there are so many different locations throughout the film. Due to the huge success of Snow White, Walt Disney wanted more famous voices for Pinocchio, which marked the first time an animated film had used celebrities as voice actors. He cast popular singer Cliff Edwards, also known as Ukulele Ike, as Jiminy Cricket. Disney rejected the idea of having an adult play Pinocchio and insisted that the character be voiced by a real child. He cast 11-year-old child actor Dickie Jones, who had previously been in other films during the time. Another voice actor recruited was Mel Blanc, best remembered for voicing many of the characters in the Warner Brothers cartoon shorts. Blank was hired to perform the voice of Gideon the Cat. However, it was eventually decided that Gideon would be mute, so all of Blank's recorded dialogue was deleted, except for one hiccup, which was heard three times in the finished film. Remember, Gideon, the time I tied strings on you and passed you off as a puppet? <laughs> the original budget was $500,000, but the development of the film caused it to go way over budget and ended up costing $2.5 million dollars one of the most expensive films produced at the time. In our last video, we talked about Disney's legendary nine old men. Remember, during this production, they were still very young and growing to become the animators we now know. It would be tempting to say that Pinocchio is the pinnacle of Disney animation. This is a dynamic film in which acting which is what animation is really about, acting with pencils and pens and ink and paint. It's where acting really takes off and we see it in a way that had never been seen in animation before. Early scenes animated by Ollie Johnson and Frank Thomas show that Pinocchio's design was actually like that of a real wooden puppet with a long pointed nose and a peaked cap and bare wooden hands. Walt Disney was not impressed with the work that was being done on the film. He felt that no one could really sympathise with such a character and called for a halt in production so they could get the character's design right. Fred Moore redesigned the character slightly to make him more appealing, but the design still retained a wooden feel. Young and upcoming animator Milt Carl felt that Thomas Johnson and Moore were rather obsessed with the idea of this boy being a wooden puppet and felt that they should forget that he was a puppet and create an appealing young character. He believed that they could always draw the wooden joints on and make him a wooden puppet afterwards. Hamilton Lusker suggested to Carl that he should demonstrate his beliefs by animating a test sequence. Carl showed Walt Disney a test in which Pinocchio is underwater looking for his father. From this scene Carl remade the character by making him look more like a real boy. The only parts of Pinocchio that still looked like a puppet were his arms, legs and wooden nose. 
They were thinking in terms of a puppet all the time, naturally, because he was a puppet. And I was very critical of what they had, so I did a little test scene where Pinocchio had the, had the donkey ears and a tail, and he was down on the sea bottom, and he knocked on the shell of this clam and asked him if he had any idea where he could find Monster of the Whale. And I handle it not thinking of so much as a puppet as, as a, just a little boy. Walt embraced Carl's scene immediately and urged writers to change Pinocchio into a more innocent and naive person that reflected Carl's design. However, Disney discovered that the new Pinocchio was too helpless and was far too often led astray by deceiving characters. Therefore, in the summer of 1938, Disney and his story team established the character of the Cricket. Originally in the book, the Cricket was only a minor character that Pinocchio killed by squashing him with a mallet, and the character returns later as a ghost. Walt dubbed the Cricket Jiminy, and made him into a character that would try to guide Pinocchio into the right decisions. Once the character was expanded, he was shown as a realistic Cricket, with two legs, but Disney wanted something more likeable. If you remember from our last video, Ward Kimball has spent several months animating a soup-eating sequence in Snow White. This was cut from the film due to pacing reasons. Kimball was going to quit, but Ward convinced him to stay by promoting him to supervise an animator of Jiminy Cricket. Kimball created the design for Jiminy Cricket. He described him as a little man with an egg head and no ears. The only thing that makes him a cricket is because we call him one. My first impression of him was this ugly insect. And I said, how can that guy carry the picture? I said, my only answer to this is I've got to make him look funny. Well, Walt really didn't want a clown looking cricket. As he put it, make him cute, Kimball. Eric Larson animated Figaro the cat. He was a master at giving life to the mute character. The nine old men worked well to play off of each other, each showing their strengths. One of the pleasures of studying a film like Pinocchio over and over again is that you learn to distinguish the styles of the major animators. Now, when you get into that pool hall on Pleasure Island, that is Freddie Moore doing Lampwick. It is Milt Call doing Pinocchio. And it's Ward Kimball doing The Cricket. And there is just so much pleasure in watching these three masters play off each other in that sequence. Who's the beetle? Oh, put me down. I'm going to He's my conscience. He tells me what's right and wrong. During the production what? of the film, the character model department was headed by Joe Grant, whose department was responsible for the building of three-dimensional clay models of the characters in the film. These models were then given to the staff to observe how a character should be drawn from any angle. The model makers also built working models of Geppetto's clocks, as well as Stromboli's gypsy wagon and the coachman's carriage. It was incredibly difficult to animate a moving vehicle, so instead they filmed a carriage on a miniature set using stop motion animation. Then each frame of the animation was transferred onto animation cells using an early version of Xerox. The cells were then painted on the back and animators would add their characters to the scene. Like Snow White, live action footage was shot for Pinocchio with the actors playing the scenes. Simply tracing it would result in stiff, unnatural movement. So the animators used the footage as a guide. We still use reference in a very similar way today. Pinocchio was a groundbreaking achievement in effects animation. The effects animators create anything that moves other than the characters. This includes vehicles, machinery, and natural effects such as rain, lightning, snow, smoke, shadows and water, as well as fantasy elements like fairy dust. The abstract animator Oscar Fischinger, who mainly worked on Fantasia, contributed to the effects animation of the Blue Fairy's Wand. One effects animator kept a diary about his year-long animation on the water effects. This included splashes, ripples, bubbles, waves and the illusion of being underwater. To help give depth to the ocean, the animators used larger pen strokes on waves on the water surface in the foreground and put in less detail as the surface moved further back. This created the effect of distance. After the animation was traced onto cells, the animators would trace it once more with blue and black pencil to give the waves a sculptured look. 
These techniques enabled Pinocchio to be one of the first animated films to have highly realistic effects animation. Walt Disney wanted to achieve perfection with this film, and many believe he accomplished this. Walt put pressure on you to make it better, whether he had a nickel in his pocket or a million dollars. He worked harder than anybody, and he would drum his fingers on the chair and he'd rub his chin and scowl and think, there's potential here and we're not getting it. The film created the sound effect for magic by experimenting with different unique instruments. This is now the sound we associate with any magic in Disney films. Pinocchio received many positive reviews on release. It had high expectations, and many reviews said it was even better than Snow White. The New York Times gave the film 5 out of 5 stars, saying, Pinocchio is here at last. It is every bit as fine as we had prayed it would be, if not finer. Time gave the film a positive review, saying it tops the high standard Snow White set. The charm, humour and loving care with which it treats its characters puts it in a class by itself. The film won the Academy Award for Best Original Song and Best Original Score, the first Disney film to win either. However, it was initially a box office disaster due to World War II. The box office returns from the film's initial release were both below Snow White's success and below studio expectations. The film cost twice as much as Snow White at 2.289 million. Disney only made 1 million by late 1940. This was due to the fact that World War II had cut off the European and Asian markets overseas. Joe Grant recalled Walt Disney being very, very depressed about Pinocchio's initial returns at the box office. The distributor RKO recorded a loss of $94,000 for the film. Many film historians consider this to be the film that most closely approaches technical perfection of all the Disney feature animations. Film critic Leonard Maltin said with Pinocchio, Disney reached not only the height of his powers, but the apex of what many critics consider to be the realm of an animated cartoon. It eventually made a profit in its 1945 reissue and is considered one of the greatest animated films ever made. By 1973, the film had earned 13 million from the initial 1940 release and four reissues. Further reissues in subsequent years have brought Pinocchio's lifetime gross to 84.3 million. Pinocchio was re-released in 1945, 1954, 1962, 1971, 1978, 1984 and in 1992. RKO handled the first two reissues in 1945 and 1954, while Disney itself reissued the film from 1962. The 1992 reissue was digitally restored by cleaning and removing scratches from the original one, one frame at a time, and revitalizing the color. In 1994, Pinocchio was added to the United States National Film Registry. In 2008, the American Film Institute revealed its top 1010, the best 10 films in 10 classic American film genres. Pinocchio was acknowledged as the second best film in the animation genre after Snow White. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has the website's highest rating of 100%, meaning every single one of the 49 reviews of the film are positive, with an average rating of 9.8 out of 10. The August 1993 issue of Playboy cited 43 instances of violence and other unfavourable behaviour in this film including 23 instances of battery, 9 acts of property damage, 3 slang uses of the word jackass, 3 acts of violence involving animals, 2 shots of male nudity and 1 instance of implied death. When VHSs started to become popular, the Walt Disney Company did not want to release their films on video. They were happy with the success they were having by re-releasing their films every 7-10 to 10 years in the cinema. Disney believed that if they released the film on VHS, it would cheapen the Disney brand, as you could watch the film at any time. They decided to trial VHS with Pinocchio. This was a breakthrough moment in the history of Walt Disney home video. The Walt Disney Company decided to sell the VHS for $80, with the idea that people would not buy the video, but instead rent it multiple times by blockbusters. Remember when that was a thing? It would become the best-selling home video title of the year, selling 150,000 units. It would then be reissued on October the 14th, 1986 to advertise the home video debut 
of Sleeping Beauty. Since his debut, Jiminy Cricket has become a reoccurring iconic Disney character and has made numerous other appearances. In the 1950s to 70s, Jiminy Cricket appeared in a four-part series of educational films aimed at a young audience. He advised children how to steer clear of dangerous traffic, sharp objects, strangers and exposed electrical lines. Several of those series were first shown on the Mickey Mouse Club. Jiminy appeared in Mickey's Christmas Carol as the ghost of Christmas past. Extra fact, Mickey's Christmas Carol was the first original Mickey Mouse theatrical cartoon produced in over 30 years. Mickey had not appeared in a movie theatre since 1953. Many additional characters seen in the film had also not appeared in theatres for several decades. Pinocchio games were released for Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Game Boy and Super Nintendo in 1993. Geppetto and Pinocchio also appear as characters in the game Kingdom Hearts. The inside of Monstro is also featured as one of the worlds. Jiminy Cricket appears as well, keeping a diary of the game's progress in Kingdom Hearts. The film and characters are still popular in culture today, featured at many Disney parks and other forms of entertainment. Many of Pinocchio's characters are costume characters at Disney parks. You can meet them and often get photos with both Pinocchio and Geppetto. Pinocchio's Daring Journey is a popular ride at the original Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. A dark ride is an indoor ride in which passengers ride guided vehicles. They travel through specially lit scenes that contain animation, sound, music and special effects. Tromboli's Marionette Show is a feature in the attraction in which guests are trapped inside a giant cage. The Disneyland version of the ride was the first attraction created by Disney to use holographic material which appeared on a handheld mirror in the scene where the boys turn into donkeys on Pleasure Island. The Pepper's Ghost Illusion is used when the blue fairy disappears, leaving fairy dust on the floor. I remember the first time I saw this and I couldn't believe that the blue fairy had just disappeared in front of my eyes and I could not work out how it was done. As a child, it just looked like magic. The basic trick involves a stage that is specially arranged into two rooms. One the audiences can see into, and a second that is hidden to the side called the blue room. A plate of glass is placed somewhere in the main room at an angle that reflects the view of the blue room towards the audience. This creates the effect of a ghost in front of you. Disneyland used the same illusion in the Haunted Mansion ride. Pinocchio's Village is a quick service restaurant at Walt Disney World that serves pizza and macaroni cheese. There are similar quick service restaurants at the Disney parks in Anaheim and Paris as well. In the mid 2000s, Disney Toon Studios began development on a sequel to Pinocchio. It would see Pinocchio on a strange journey and leads Pinocchio to question why life appears unfair sometimes. When John Lasseter of Pixar fame became the chief creative officer at Walt Disney Animation Studios, he canceled the planned sequel to focus on new original films. I honestly think that was a good idea we have seen over the years many straight to DVD releases that nobody needs to see. A live action adaptation of the film is in development with Robert Zemeckis, director of Back to the Future, attached to direct. On October 25th, 2019, it was reported that an animated project based on Jiminy Cricket is being developed for Disney Plus. Thank you for watching this series on 100 Facts About Disney. If you haven't already, go and watch my previous video about the film that started it all off, Snow White. Come back next week to see the third feature animation by Disney, Fantasia.